Hello and welcome back to Exothermic Plays Games. I am Exothermic and the date today is Monday, September 30th, 2024. I am now nine months through a countdown of my favorite video games of all time through each day of the year and coming in at number 93 is Assassin's Creed. Before I jump into all the details here, I just want to talk about my experience recording this. Originally, I played this game on the Xbox 360 when it first came out. It was great, and I don't really remember having any issues playing it. Here I'm recording the PC port, which I had bought on Steam some time ago, but this is my first time actually playing this version of the game, and I've run into some fascinating things. For starters, I apologize for any video stutter and lag that pops up throughout the rest of this. It turns out that every once in a while the game tries to connect to an external server of some sort that doesn't exist anymore and the game just stops when it tries that. The solution I found to fix this was to put my whole PC into airplane mode. You think that's jank, but it's at least workable. However. That's not all. I was having some serious physics bugs, and it turns out some parts of the physics of the game are just done based on the refresh rate, which is crazy, and modern PC games are too good. I had to go into my NVIDIA settings, cap my FPS at 60, and then go into the game settings and turn on VSync. There was other weird things too, like I was playing with a controller, but some of the buttons were mapped wrong through Steam and I had to fix them, which thankfully they at least let you do. But navigating to that, I couldn't use the controller. It didn't matter that much because I, you know, obviously I could just use the mouse and whatever, but it was just another weird thing in this, one of the jankiest PC ports I have ever played. Avoid playing this on PC if you're able, folks. Assassin's Creed is a really cool concept. Historical fiction marries sci-fi in a fascinating way. You are playing technically as Desmond Miles, a bartender that's kidnapped by a weird science organization working in experimental tech regarding human memory access. They hook him up to a special machine called an Animus, which can read ancestral memories stored in your DNA. For a game largely set like 800 years ago, the tech here is pretty crazy. The majority of the game, however, is done through the lens of Desmond's ancestor, Altair, a high-ranking member of the Brotherhood of Assassins working largely through what is now modern-day Syria. He's a bit too hot-headed and full of himself, at least at the beginning of the game, and forsakes the three rules of the Brotherhood, namely to avoid hurting innocents, to stay hidden, and to not bring any harm, intentionally or otherwise, to the Brotherhood itself. Uh, yeah, he, he breaks all of those, and brings the attention of the Templars to the Assassin Headquarters. While Altair does fix that problem he created, he's demoted to the lowest rank in their order, and you, the player, have to build everything back up for him. The game is fairly open world, with sprawling cities connected by large expanses of wilderness, Within all of these areas, especially the cities, there's loads you can do as an assassin. You can collect intel by eavesdropping, you can pickpocket valuables and other important items, you can protect the weak and powerless from the corrupt and powerful. But mostly, you can run. The game is filled with parkour, and it's done, usually, really well. With all of the sprawling streets and densely packed buildings, you can travel throughout the city in a variety of ways, and you're going to need to. Lots of your actions might draw the attention of city guards or Templars there on crusades, and you need to get away from them. 
is a master of disguise and stealth, there are a lot of tools at your disposal. You can hide in stalls, jump into bales of hay, or blend in with other white-robed scholars, which is my favorite because, like, you don't actually look that much like them. You're wearing all of this, like, red sash, all sorts of things. You have a big-ass sword, and the guards are just like, hmm, which one of them is he? I don't know, we'll give up. It doesn't make any sense, but it is pretty fun. Or you can, you know, kill anyone that wants to mess with you. Admittedly, the combat itself isn't that exciting in Assassin's Creed, uh, but it's not that significant of a deal with so much of the game being the exploration and intel gathering. Sometimes you even need to gather intel on your intel with viewpoints you can unlock. Throughout the world, there are very high up places you can climb to and take a proper look at the world around you, adding details to your map you can open. These are called viewpoints, and there's a lot of great scenery to see from them. Importantly, as with any really high up place you get to, how do you get down? You simply take a leap of faith. You square up and jump, usually into a bale of hay. Remember those physics issues I talked about at the beginning of this video? Absolutely hilarious. Once. Here's what it looks like in all its glory when the game doesn't hate me. Absolutely awesome every time. So where does the assassin come in with Assassin's Creed? Throughout the game, you are given targets you need to kill in order to help the world become a better place. The Brotherhood operates under the idea that killing one person to save hundreds or thousands is not only good math, but a moral obligation. Many of your missions require checking in on a local embassy hidden somewhere within the city, and it's really great how they hide these things in plain sight. I love the level design of Assassin's Creed, and I think it's something not enough people really talk about when evaluating the game. Uh, once you track them down, maybe stalk them a bit, find a secluded area, depending on the mission, you might be able to take them down quietly and sneak away, or you can just kill them in front of everyone, then kill their guards, and then make a break for it. It's funny, the uh, build up to a lot of these kills is actually really exciting, and it's often fun to get in position for the hit, but the actual fights are often just okay. Which I know is a weird thing for me to be talking about with a game in the top 100, but everything else is just so great that I can get over the meh combat. Meanwhile, there's a lot more to the story than just Altair's memories. Of course, within them, there's a whole plot of intrigue and treachery within the Brotherhood and the conflict against the Templars. But outside of that, in the modern world, there's a whole plot of intrigue and treachery within the Brotherhood in the conflict against the Templars. The scientists running the Animus are actually the modern iteration of the Templar Order, and Desmond is actually part of the current Brotherhood of Assassins. I didn't record all of this for today, largely because of how much time I spent uh, working on yesterday's video, but also because of how awful the PC port is. But the Templars are after information referring to ancient artifacts pertaining to the Garden of Eden, which contain immense power, and the assassins want to stop them from getting it. There's an assassin mole in the Templar Order, but you're also put in constant danger with everything going on. Meanwhile, back in Altair's life, he kills a bunch more people and completes his trial to regain his ranking, only to piece together that the leader of the Brotherhood is in fact the corrupt problem they've been having, and kills him, too, claiming the leadership spot within the Brotherhood to spread its influence throughout Europe and other parts of the world. The plot has a lot of layers to it, with compelling world building on multiple fronts and a really interesting dichotomy throughout both factions that's mirrored in both of the timelines, but I still maintain the greatest strength of Assassin's Creed is just the parkour and exploration of all of these cities. While I think a lot more modern games have jumped the shark on this, I'm a sucker for random little collectibles, and Assassin's Creed has no shortage of those with all of these little flags everywhere. You don't get 
anything for them, but I think they still work as an excuse to run through every corner of every city and jump around like a madman, which is really what this game is all about. Join me tomorrow as I talk about my 92nd favorite game, where I have forgotten to close the blast doors before sending all the oxygen in a room to the vacuum of space, uh, way more than I would like to admit.